true, be true, my own true love, be true for one short hour. If you be true, my own true love, this ship and Okay, guys. So let's let's uh, let's jump into it. Let's talk about this. I want to do a little talk about Little Gold Fiddle, which is a, an exceedingly rare uh, cant of fable that I just learned from from George Gibson, my, my my banjo mentor from way back. And George learned it from his dad. Um, I'll just refer to it as a song. Basically, you know, if you're not familiar with this, I wasn't. The term cant of fable is like old French for song story. So it's basically, it's a story, a spoken story and a song combined. And in a book that I was looking at through to try to determine more about this, they, this guy was, was, was trying to collect candy fables in North America back in the 40s. And he defined a candy fable as, um, as any song that contained spoken words, um, or any, any sp spoken story that contained a song. So that's basically what we have here. And I'll refer you to our earlier posts where uh, we were able to dig up some pretty good research. One of our members, Dave, really um, really helped us shine the light on, on some of the, uh, the obscure nature of this piece of music. George was not aware, you know, he learned the song from his dad in, I guess, the 40s or 50s, and it was a favorite of his father. And his father sang, you know, a very clean, much cleaner version than, than what is found elsewhere. Uh, and probably just because he, he liked the melody. The melody's pretty tr uh, catchy. It's a funny story. And he wanted to be able to perform it for friends and family in the home. And there are versions out there that are, that are pretty lewd and, and, you know, I guess you might even say vulgar. They, they contain the F-bomb, you know. So you can't really sing it around kids or whatever. But, uh... So prior to Dave helping us out, the only other version that, that George knew about for sure was this written version that came out of New Jersey that was printed in a book called, uh, or an article, sorry, a journal article from like 1940-something called The Canny Fable in New Jersey. And it had the really, the, the really filthy version with the F-bomb in it and stuff. But uh, so that was the only other version that George knew about, but our friend Dave on the Patreon group at Banjo Heritage Commons... Uh, he gave me a whole bunch of other resources and different versions, and we were able to track down what seems to be the original printed version of Little Gold Fiddle, which was printed as um, the, the Merchant and the Fiddler's Wife in an old uh, broadside from England dated 1707. So I think it's pretty amazing that this song, that the song survived. It was originally a great long ballad, printed on a big broadside sheet of paper or whatever. Uh, it's pretty astounding to me that, that the ballad survived all the way into 1950s um, Kentucky as a, as a song story. And, and here we are today in 2018 talking about it. It just really tickles me. I think it's a beautiful piece of music. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's certainly sexist and jaded and dated, um, you know, by our standards today, but it's, it's a pretty, I think it's an important piece of history. And it's a rare glimpse into, uh, into the past. So for those of you who either haven't read it, all that information that we posted yet, or who don't want to read it, I'll just give you the rundown. Basically, the joke, the story is um, from George's version, which is a little bit different, as you might understand, from the 1707 version, but not that different. But George's version from his dad, Mal, is basically this, this, old, this older guy who uh, waited late in life to get married. 
he finally gets married to, to a good woman, and, he, and uh, they go on a honeymoon on a sea cruise out on the ocean. And the ship's captain tells the, the, the old fiddle player guy, who had just married this, this younger woman, presumably, the ship's captain says that he can have any woman he wants. And, and the little fiddler, the old fiddler, says, no, you can't have my woman, you know, she's faithful. And the sea captain says, I'll bet my ship and cargo against your gold fiddle, because the guy's got a golden fiddle in George's version, I'll bet my ship and cargo against your fiddle that I can have your wife within one hour if you leave me alone with her in a room. <laughs> and so, you know, the damn fool, he agrees to the bet, he, he locks his wife up in, in the captain's, you know, quarters, and leaves her in there for an hour, and after a while he gets scared. And he starts singing and playing his little gold fiddle up to the door, listening, and he says, you know, uh, be true, be true, my own true love, be true for one short hour. If you be true, um, for one short hour, the ship and cargo is ours. And his wife answers back through the door, too late, too late, my own true love, his arms around my middle. He's kissed me once and had me twice, you've lost your damn gold fiddle. Anyhow, I think it's really cool. And I just wanted to talk about that and tell you guys, so basically the way you, you play it is it's in double C tuning. And of course you tell, you, you tell the story first, you give the background, and then the old fiddler, he sings, he sings his verse. And then he listens again, he doesn't hear anything from her, he sings again, and then she responds with, with the female response, and, and that's the tagline. And the fun thing George does is he stops playing at the end, and he goes, you know, uh, Too late, too late, my home, true love, his arms around my middle, and you've lost your damn gold fiddle. That's where George's dad ended it. He didn't go to the part where, you know, where she says the captain's, you know, me and the captain have, have had sex twice. You know, he didn't sing that part around the kids. But, but I like to sing, that's in the earlier version. So, he's kissed me twice or once. He's had me twice. And you've lost your damn gold fiddle. I think that's hilarious. I think that that um, any crowd after sundown with a little bit of alcohol in them would probably laugh and applaud if you if you performed that well. So that's cool. So guys, it's in double C, and the tune, the melody is very similar to In the Pines. You know, in the pines, in the pines, where the sun never shines, and I shivered when the cold. Very similar to In the Pines, but it is distinct. There's some little small distinct differences that I think make Little Gold Fiddle sound even cooler than In the Pines. In the Pines, incidentally, I always play out of F sharp D, F sharp A D, old, old Reuben tuning, but Little Gold Fiddle is played out of G C, G C D. And I'm actually tuned all the way up to standard pitch G C, G C D today. So if you want to play the tune, basically, you know, it's it's uh, you start out on the bass string. It's almost all played off the bass string. So you slide from the third to the fourth fret, and then play the fourth string open. Be true, be true, and then the third string open, and then go to the fourth string at the fifth fret. My own true love, and then back to your slide. Be true. Four up to the second fret, one short hour, and that's it. It just repeats over and over again. Or you can whatever you want to do. So check it out, guys. Let's see. I'd like to see some versions pop up out there. I'm for sure gonna gonna try to perform this little song story the next time that I perform out, which which should be this September at the North Georgia Folk Festival. I think that's probably the next time I'm gonna play out, and so I'm for sure gonna um, probably try to close my performance with with Little Gold Fiddle. Um, and so, real guy, I have a couple more minutes, guys. I want to tell you 
You know, I've, I've been selling a lot of banjos and guitars lately for George. This is part of his collection. We're selling off uh, a decent chunk of his collection, and we're starting with some cheaper instruments. And here I've got three banjos. We're calling these are figure eight banjos. They're from 1890s or the early 1900s. I don't really know what they're actually called, but there's a figure eight on each one right here. All three of these are identical. They're basically just, you know, cheap mail order catalogs from 1900 or 1910, but they're good banjos. They originally had a ton of brackets on them. George took off half of these brackets, so now you've got a normal number of brackets. This would be a great banjo for a beginner who wants a cheap 1890s, 1900 traditional old time banjo. So my job is to fix these up. I've already started, but I got a lot of work to do yet. Fix these up and get them sold. And I'd like to offer them to you guys first um, at, at a cheaper rate than what I'm gonna offer them later. Cause I really, I know some of you have expressed interest in getting, in getting a better instrument or, or at least an older instrument. And these are good old instruments and I can get them in your hands for cheap. So let me know down in the, in the comment or discussion section if you're interested and, uh, and we'll see whoever, who, who needs them, uh, I'll get them to you. I'd like to sell all three of these banjos to you patrons um, at a good cheap price. And if, if you're overseas, if you're in England or whatever, hey, we'll, we'll figure something out. We'll get it to you. So let me know what you think, guys, if you're interested in one of these figure eight banjos. If not, or if you miss these, don't worry. I'm going to have a lot more to sell. So keep, uh, keep tuned. And thanks for looking. And uh, thanks for everything, all your contributions. And uh, I'll see you guys soon. Take care.